channel. Welcome if you are new. I'm Tanya and I am documenting my journey to baby number two. Um, if you haven't been here before, I documented my journey to baby number one. I battled battle infertility for four years and I suffered two miscarriages and a whole lot of other things in between. But my rainbow baby boy is Lux and He'll be two in a couple months here, and we are starting to try for baby number two. Today, I am at my first appointment at a new doctor's office. I told you guys that I had this appointment coming up, and it is today. It was supposed to be last week, like I told you guys, but the morning of, they canceled because they were having issues with staffing and all this stuff, so it got pushed back a week, so today i'm here for my new appointment i'm here i'm 20 minutes early right now i stopped at panera on the way i was a whole hour early panera and they were just on the struggle bus this morning so i'm about to eat and have a little bit of my uh cinnamon crunch latte that i picked up but i wanted to come on before my appointment just to kind of check in welcome you guys to the video i figured i'd do this like throwback style i used to do like some of my updates vlog style i'm in the parking lot at my doctor's office coming with my medical records my old doctor's office wrote me like a cute little note and told me to they said good luck in tennessee virginia will miss you if you knew my husband's in the navy we live in tennessee now i got myself a book this is a book i'm currently reading this is a book I'm currently reading, A Spark of Light. I have my book, I have my planner because I'm, I might need to write down future appointments. I've read the reviews because I looked up the doctor that I'm seeing today last night and I read my read some reviews. Overall, this office has like 4.8 stars on Google or whatever. So the majority of the reviews were great. The reviews on the doctor that I'm seeing were all great that I saw, but somebody gave it like two stars because they did wait for like an hour and a half or something like that. So just, in, it doesn't look like there's many people here. I feel like I might be the only patient. Maybe I'm assuming these, well, actually this is patient parking on this side. So there's not that many people here this morning. So if I am waiting, I do have something to entertain me. I don't have anything else going on today, really. I'm just going to run to Old Navy afterwards to make some exchanges. I have to stop by the post office to send the baby dolls to my sisters and some other stuff for my niece and a Target run, which is right up the street. So um, I'm overall though, I'm excited for the appointment. I have my questions ready. I told you guys that I found, and the thing I didn't mention in the video, I found, this is my planner, I found the therapist that I told you guys that I did some research and found in this area that specializes in like reproductive health um, or reproductive trauma, whatever. I found her on reproductivefacts.org and there's a search option for you to search your area to see if you can find a counselor or therapist in your area that specializes in like infertility, fertility loss, miscarriage, pregnancy, infants, infant loss, grief, all that stuff. Yeah, if you want, if you're interested in going to find you a therapist to help you through your trying to conceive journey, no matter what you have going on, even if you're just trying and it's taking a little bit longer, you're, you aren't diagnosed with anything, just so you have some extra support in your journey, please make sure you do that mental health during this process is so so important it is so important it wasn't until i got my therapist we did work for about six months and i started to see things differently i started to feel differently mentally i just felt great i finally conceived and yeah it's just so important so um this time i'm gonna ask the doctor i'm seeing today if he knows her or if he has one that he recommends so that i can research the two but i'm just gonna make sure i get the referral in to tricare so that i can get what i need i have my list of questions i told you guys they're on my phone so i'll post the questions that i found if you've dealt with preeclampsia from the preeclampsia group that i'm in i'll post the questions down in the description box so you guys 
will know the questions that I'm asking today. Let me stop rambling. I'm gonna eat my breakfast before I walk into this new place and I'll try to vlog in there if I can. Um, but for sure afterwards, I'll give you guys an update on what's going on. It's just pretty much a, an appointment, like a regular appointment where we're supposed to be going over my PCOS, kind of starting the groundwork or whatever. And then I'm also getting a vaginal ultrasound done today too. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll keep you guys posted and I'll talk to you later. All right, you guys. So I needed a minute after my appointment to gather my thoughts and I guess collect myself because I'm not a super emotional person, but I was feeling the lump in my throat and I was getting really emotional and I was about to cry. And I had to talk to my husband because I do not feel good about this doctor. And it just sucks. I'm like, dang, it's not starting out good already. He tried to reassure me that he knows what he's doing and all this stuff because even with the mask, I wear all of my expressions on my face and um, he could tell I wasn't feeling him. The nurse could tell I wasn't feeling him. And when he left, the nurse tried to like reassure me and she, you know, let me know, like, I understand your frustration. I'm a military spouse too, and moving around and trying to establish uh, relationships with new healthcare providers and stuff is always going to be challenging or whatever but it just doesn't feel good when I'm starting out on a journey that already may have its challenges I don't want to claim that it will but just on my history you know man I really can't stand doctors who just kind of take a generalized approach to caring for patients I like mine to be like individualized because my fertility journey or my infertility journey drug out way longer than I feel like it had to because so many I was going to so many different doctors you know moving around and stuff moving with the military but I kind of fell through the cracks a lot and a lot was missed because everybody generalized or only wanted to focus on one particular thing and man I'm about to cry again I'm just so frustrated because I told this man like they made me make an appointment only to be seen for PCOS and I was like, well, I wanted to, you know, come to talk about family planning or whatever. I've had issues in the past and I just kind of want to get an idea of like what your game plan is going to be. So it's a lot of miscommunication between the front desk staff thinking that they know too much and trying to tell you what they think you need. The nurse had a different response when I sat down and talked to her and then the doctor had a whole nother response so in this office um it already took me forever dealing with just the front desk staff to get to this appointment and i'm already like i had let it go but now i'm pissed off again because my original appointment was last week and they they waited until the morning of to call me and say oh we're having scheduling issues we have to cancel your appointment we can get you in next week though so I'm already like, it took me three months to get the original appointment. The morning of that appointment, you guys call and say, hey, we don't have enough staff or whatever's going on. I understand with COVID going on, things happen, but shit. <laughs> and like, it's just already feeling like it's not gonna be a good fit for me. And now I, I'm really gonna have to like, look around i know tricare only gives you like one or two times to change your doctor or whatever so i'm gonna have to call them and see what my options are i did get some labs done today though so let me just go over the appointment so i went in there you guys saw the room the doctor comes in to do a pap because i'm a new patient or whatever which is fine they scheduled me for like a pap smear like new patient intake type appointment and also scheduled me for an ultrasound that was supposed to be after my appointment 
y'all know I came with my labs and everything. So the doctor came in. He was like, okay, so we're here to see you for an appointment for PCOS or whatever. And I was like, yeah, you know, me and my husband want to start trying again. My husband, he's my husband, my son, he's 22 months or whatever. And, you know, I had preeclampsia. I'm just kind of, you know, I want to come in. I want to come in to talk about family planning, like the next pregnancy, you know, with a history of preeclampsia, like kind of giving him my questions that I have. I didn't even get to ask him all my questions, y'all, because he ended up like rushing things along. But I gave him my history with my preterm labor, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, my high blood pressure issues, postpartum, and also, you know, my history with the kidney failure, all these things that I went through, blood clots and all that stuff. He got that full rundown and he was like, okay. I told him that the endocrinologist that I was seeing here, I he ran labs back in july and you guys will remember i posted a video giving you guys a full rundown of my that appointment like all my labs were normal so i just let him know like the doctor said all my labs were normal the only thing was i needed to take some vitamin d and he put me on vitamin d3 uh vitamin d 50,000 iu once a week for about 10 weeks or whatever and so he was like, okay, well, you know, I still, how long have you guys been trying? And I was like, um, I guess technically since like August, September, August time frame, and it's taken me a while to get into this office or whatever so that we can get started. He was like, okay, well, how are your cycles? I was like, well, you know, I got the Moderna vaccine for COVID and ever since then it's like my cycles are like 28 day cycles perfect cycles or whatever and um he was like okay well I think you guys he's like are you trying ovulation test strips at home and I was like no I don't usually rely on ovulation test strips because with PCOS you know you can kind of get negative readings or whatever sometimes it's not always accurate with PCOS doing the at home ovulation test or whatever and I've done fertility treatments my whole journey so all of my things have been controlled and the doctors have monitored ovulation and all these things for me so I haven't really had to be on top of really doing ovulation and um, he was like well I think you can just do ovulation test strips and you guys should just try for another three or four months and then you come back to me if you haven't gotten pregnant then and I'm like, I told you I had PCOS, I have hyper subclinical hyperthyroidism and a history of having a microadenoma or prolactinoma or whatever that affected my hormones or whatever. This man didn't suggest like running his own panel of labs just to start like a baseline, you know, level of labs. This is J January. I haven't had none of my hormones or anything checked since July you don't think that you should start your baseline with okay let me run my own lab see what's going on with your health you're a new patient here let me get things figured out for myself or whatever i know what the other doctors did or whatever he didn't even look at the medical records that i bought with me he was like oh just give them to the front desk they'll copy them and i'm just like what like who are you he was like i do this trust me trust me we've done this plenty of times and i'm like yeah but i can already tell that you're generalizing my health care plan and not individualizing it like i need you to like he and then he he acknowledged that i'm a bit of a puzzle so you already know like I have quite a few things going on that you have to figure out working around or whatever. And then you just telling me to go home, try to conceive on my own for the next four months. I asked him about the metformin. I told him, you know, the last time I was able to conceive my son, I was on cabergoline already because of the microadenoma. And also the month prior, I had started taking the metformin for PCOS or whatever. My doctor, I suggested it, I told him, I suggested it to her. She didn't think it would be, it would do no harm. So she just went ahead and prescribed it to me. And <clears throat> he was like, oh, okay. 
on about four months or so when you come back if you haven't conceived yet we'll look at clomid or putting you on metformin and i'm just like what like i don't get your thought process here like i just don't get it like he was just like uh like nonchalant about everything not really hearing out my opinion on things i told him that i have a little progesterone history or whatever so i was on progesterone suppositories through the first trimester whatever with my last pregnancy and he was like oh we'll see if you do get pregnant we'll just check your progesterone then and then decide and i'm just kind of like what <laughs> like i'm used to the military side of things my military doctors my fertility doctors they made sure that I had progesterone on hand, like to take after ovulation, to take, you know, through the first trimester, whatever. I had everything that I need. I had a stock of everything that I needed at home. Like that's what I'm used to. And then I'm getting here with this civilian doctor and he's just like, eh, we'll see what happens in another four months. And I'm like, no, bro, I need things to be I like to go hard in the paint when I get started. I want to be aggressive with things because I already know how long it has taken me in the past and I'm not trying to go down that road again. Like, that's not what I want to do. Like, what are you doing? I was just so mad. I was so frustrated. You can hear it in my voice. I'm about to start crying again because it's just, it just pisses me off. It just pisses me off when doctors like, are nonchalant they rush you through your appointment like even doing the pap smear you know normally doctors like get in there like i don't have a history of irregular pap smears or anything like that so i don't even i don't have to go yearly it's like every three years or something like that for me so he was just i don't know he just even rushed that little part even like with the pelvic exam i'm used to them like getting in there like feeling around you know when they have to put their hands in there and they press around press on your belly and stuff to like check your uterus and stuff like that or check your abdomen i'm used to them like really feeling around and checking things out and he was just like mm -hmm. all right yeah so go ahead and get dressed and i'll be back so we can talk and i was like okay so then i'm like all right i can go over the the questions that i have or whatever he opened the door and was like you dressed yet i was like yeah he's like all right come on come on out here let's go get your laps and stuff done and i'm like and then he was like and then i'll see you later i'll i'll we'll talk about the results of getting your vitamin d checked and also checking your progesterone they're checking my progesterone to see if i actually ovulated last week because technically today is cycle day 23 for me and he was like even though it's not cycle day 21 we'll just check and see where your progesterone is for cycle day 23 so i'm like in the hallway I'm like okay i have questions <laughs> like what so i didn't after when i realized like he was rushing me out there was no time really spent after i gave him like my history with my preterm labor and stuff like that there was no time to ask like no other questions really it, it just <sighs> He just pissed me off and I hated that I was standing there in a the hallway trying to like get some questions. I even asked about the therapist or whatever. I was like, yeah, so I wanted to know um, if you have a, you know, therapist here, if you have one that you recommend your patients to when they're going through this or whatever. I was like, I already explained, you know, I had a really traumatic experience trying to conceive before and I like the extra support. He was like, oh yeah, we have some counselors and stuff, but if you found somebody, just go with them. And I was like, well, I have a name and stuff. Can you see if you know this person? Oh no, I don't know him, but you can just try them out. And I was just like, I'm just like, dang like you've already rushed through my appointment 
I was late being taken back, but it wasn't like super late or nothing like that. I think I got there and I filled out my appointment. My appointment was at 1050. It might have taken them about 20 minutes to call me to the back. And then you just rushed me along through my appointment. So that was just, it was just frustrating. It just pissed me off. And so I called my husband afterwards. And I was like, you know, I don't know how I feel about this man. I do not know how I'm feeling about him. I don't know. So what I'm doing now, let's get there. I'm gonna wait for the labs to come back. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait for the labs to come back and see what they say, but I'm gonna be calling TRICARE to see what my options are as far as changing my OB because I was, my PCM or my primary care doctor had to put a referral in for me to go see this OB. So I'm gonna see what they tell me and then i'm gonna get on facebook because on the facebook page for the base that i live on like the families associated with this base or whatever i'm just gonna ask like other women if they've been referred there by tricare also who do they see or whatever do they have any recommendations based on what i'm looking for and i'm just gonna have to put all my business out just so i can get to somebody because google reviews said this guy was just so great and he sat down and took his time and he listened to questions and all this stuff and i'm just like what the nurse did tell me like you're in good hands you know he is a good doctor because she saw in my face how i was just like you're not gonna put me on progesterone what you're not gonna start me on metformin, or nothing. We're not gonna start Clomid or nothing like that. And he was just like, no, no, no. And then, so let me get to this. I also asked for the ultrasound. I said, well, I was also scheduled for an ultrasound today. Am I at least gonna get the ultrasound, check my ovaries or anything like that? Oh no, I don't care about what your ovaries look like right now. We'll still do the same old thing or whatever. So I'm like, well, what was the point of scheduling me for an ultrasound? to check well you can have a little file a bunch of little follicles or whatever it really doesn't matter right now i still want you and it's just kind of like he's like i still want you to go ahead and try for the next three or four months so i'm just like i don't know i don't want i don't want to start out with feeling like you've rushed me off i don't want to start out feeling like I'm just another patient and you just trying to get through the day. You're going through the motions to get through your day. Like, I don't want to start that way with a OB pre-pregnancy and then I get to pregnancy and I have questions and I'm ending up in the same situation that led me to preterm labor the first time where my doctor is just like, oh, well, that's just normal for pregnancy. Oh, no, you'll be all right. You're fine. I just don't want to deal with that again. I don't want things to be missed like they were the first time, especially with this preeclampsia again. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to change this doctor. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I'm sorry that I've been like ranting and this video is getting kind of long. I thought it would be a quick one or whatever, but I'm just so mad excuse my french i'm fucking pissed okay i am mad as hell right now and i went through like i got myself worked back up i went through a stroll through target and i went shopping i had to get diapers and stuff for lux but now i'm at old navy i'm about to run in old navy and exchange some pajamas that were gifted to lux by dion's co-worker they've never seen him and they know that he's two or he's about to be too. So they bought him some 18 to 24 month size pajamas and Lux wears a smooth 4T right now. <laughs> so um, I'm going to this Old Navy to see if I can exchange these pajamas and get him some bigger sizes or whatever. So we'll see. And then I'm going to the post office and going home. But y'all, this doctor just really pissed me off. Sorry for ranting. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you all guys for supporting as always. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. 
this is just one doctor it's just one little blip but um we're gonna get things squared away like we did the last time i just hope it doesn't take years again because i'm not doing that and this also made me think about I need to come up with an end date for myself or what's going to be my cutoff point when I'm just going to give up and be like, you know what, I'm good with the one I have. I'm not doing this again. So that's going to be something I have to discuss with Dion and I'll update you guys later on. But <sighs> Lord, have mercy. Y'all keep me in prayer. I'll keep you guys in prayer and I'll keep you guys updated. I'll try to post to like my YouTube stories and stuff like that and keep you guys um, updated on different things that are happening until the next video. I'm not exactly sure what the next video is going to be, but, but yeah, I think that's all. Let me get out of this car and continue to try to bring myself down. Actually, I do want to go to Michael's. I do want to go to Michael's. Michael's has some Black History Month stuff, um, like arts and crafts projects for kids. And I wanted to go and check that out to see what they have so I can get some stuff for Lux for our arts and crafts projects next month. But yeah. Oh, I will give it a purse update or whatever and let you guys see it all up close and personal now that I've had it for a while because I did say I would do that. So I hope that's okay with you guys. And um I'll let you know what's on my wish list because I'm ready to make another purchase. But um, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for all the love, support, and everything else. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.